Hi everyone, this is Jem from the Wine and Spirits Association of All Japan. In today's video, I will introduce and taste three Japanese craft gins that are sold under $40. In our video about Sakaki Gin, I mentioned that the gin boom around the world has taken over Japan as well. We see more and more distilleries, from very small ones to huge brands, producing artisanal gins made with Japanese botanicals. These gins come in a broad range of styles and taste profiles. Today I picked three of my favorite gins and they're all very different from each other, but what they have in common is they offer a great drinking experience for excellent value. First we have Wabi Gin, made by Hombo Shuzo in their Kagoshima distillery, where they are known for producing the Mars whiskey brand. Excellent line of whiskey, but not today's topic. Returning to Wabi Gin, Wabi means Japanese beauty. And looking at the bottle design, I think it is indeed strikingly pretty. We also have the botanicals listed in the label. Uh, so juniper berry, of course, yuzu, bitter orange, lemon, kumquat, cinnamon leaf, shell ginger, green tea leaf, ginger and perilla, which is shiso. The botanicals are selected to represent the abundant natural bounties of Kyushu. So what I like about Wabi Gin is that it is a very well-rounded gin. Um, of course, you have that citrus element from the yuzu but it is balanced out by all the other stuff that is going on, especially on the nose, we have uh, the effect of the spices, cinnamon, ginger. And on the palate, the juniper, the yuzu and the spices come all together to create a wonderful balanced mix. This is one of those gins that would shine with the addition of the tonic. So I would use this in a gin tonic, but also it can be useful in uh, many other gin-based cocktails as it is quite well-rounded, well-balanced and a refreshing gin. Next up we have Komasa Gin from Komasa Jozo. Just like Wabi Gin, it is distilled in Kagoshima. Komasa Jozo is actually known for their shochu, but they recently released an incredible Japanese single malt called Kanosuke this year, but again, that's not today's topic. Uh, going back to Komasa Gin, it actually has different versions, but the one I have here today is called Sakurajima Komikan, and the name comes from the main ingredient used in this gin. It is the world's smallest mandarins grown in the island of Sakurajima near a volcano. The gin uh, is actually a made by redistilling rice shochu with juniper berry and other botanicals led by these mandarins. The bottle is again very pretty. Uh, they really focused on that citrusy element. There are mandarins everywhere and they also tell us the story of uh, Sakurajima Komikan. Uh, basically, if you enjoy refreshing and citrus-dominated gins, this one should definitely be on your radar. It almost smells like a um, citrusy perfume. Reminds me a bit of uh, Issei Miyake perfume, also Japanese. Um, yeah, it is basically a gin that screams summer. You have a predominant orange peel, which is followed by a delicate coriander. I think this gin is great with um, the addition of soda or tonic and with a uh, slice of orange peel. Unlike Wabi Gin, Komasa really wanted to highlight this one special ingredient here and they have done an astounding job.
Last but not least, we have Akayane Craft Gin Green Tea Edition. Made by Akayane Distillery and guess where that's from? Yes, Kagoshima. Honestly, I didn't even try to make this a Kagoshima Gin video, but I seem to have a particular affinity with Kyushu Gins. And just like Komasa before, Akayane tries to utilize local botanicals in their gin and the leading ingredient is um, a local brand of tea called Chiran and their matcha green tea. Let me tell you this, there are other green tea gins out there but I've never seen tea expressed so purely in gin. I think this gin is quite incredible. The matcha notes are very apparent, bittersweet. It's quite refreshing, but there's also hints of um, vanilla and chocolate. That's what I really like about this gin. It really feels like I'm tasting matcha chocolate or something, um, which is quite pleasant. Um, I would have this with um, I would have this on the rocks with some chocolate next to it, or I would try to um, top this with iced green tea. Unlike the previous two, Akayana has no citrus element, but it's more on the herbal and spicy sweet side. I believe it is a very, very unique gin, and it really makes me feel like, okay, I'm drinking something made in Japan. What really impresses me about these three is that they are all made with the local ingredients of Kagoshima, but they're all made with different ingredients. We know about the regional diversity in Japan, but even inside those regions, there is so much diversity, so many high quality and interesting botanicals and ingredients to work with. Perhaps that's why Japan keeps producing very interesting and very delicious craft gins like these three. Hope you enjoyed the video today and let us know about the Japanese gins you tried in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this in the future. See you very soon in our next video. And until then, kanpai.